What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another weekly update. So there's all kinds of news to go over this week. And the first story is a little bit of a bummer, but it's the biggest news of the week in my opinion. And that is that Ford has discontinued the Shelby GT350 and the GT350R. So they officially said there won't be a 2021 model year. So the 2020s are the last of the line for the GT350s. And this was basically confirmed a few months ago with the leaked order guide for the 2021 Mustangs not showing that, you know, it showed the Mach 1, showed the bullet was going away, of course, and then showed, you know, the regular Mustangs and the GT500, but no GT350. Um, and so, you know, we kind of knew it was coming. Some people didn't really believe it, but now here it is. Uh, Ford's official comment is with the 700 60 horsepower Shelby GT500 now in full stride. We will finish production of the Shelby GT350 and GT350R this fall as planned. This makes the way for new additions to excite our passionate Mustang fans for 2021 model year, including the limited edition Mach 1. So that's a uh, kind of what we were fearing, you know, the Mach 1 gets the GT350 transmission, um, obviously not the engine, that's the real bummer, as that Voodoo engine is going away. Now the GT500 sounds fantastic, you'll be able to hear that some more in my uh, week with video I'll be posting next week. I had a GT500 here this past week that I was driving around. It's a lot of fun, it sounds very, very cool, but the GT350 still has a more unique sound, I think, just slightly. I mean, GT500 still sounds amazing. But anyway, um, that's the one thing the Mach 1 will be missing. And I love the five liter engine and that sound in my bullet. It's fantastic as well. It's the same engine in the Mach 1, but it's just not gonna be the same as the GT350. So I expect values of those to continue to hold strong and eventually appreciate, because um, it really is a special car and now it has reached the end of the line, which is just crazy. For some happier news though, uh, we have our first look at both the sedan and the hatchback version of the 2022 Honda Civic, the next generation version here, thanks to civicxi.com. And so they found these patent images and um, I, I think this sedan looks pretty nice. It's kind of a mix of the inside and the Accord, especially you know, the front end and the window line there on the sides is all, you know, very similar to the Accord. Um, the hatch design's a little more iffy to me. It uh, kind of looks the same, obviously, until the hatch area is the sedan. Um, but the hatchback kind of reminds me of the Kia Stinger with those taillights and the little connecting light in the middle there. Just a little flatter, which makes it a little less appealing to me than like the way it looks on the Stinger. But uh, it's good to see both these and hopefully, you know, we'll be able to see them in the flesh sometime relatively soon here and hopefully, uh, you know, get a better idea of what it actually looks looks like patent images don't always do vehicles very much justice so um, we'll reserve judgment until then and hopefully we'll see them before the end of the year but Honda hasn't given us any guarantees or any official info yet on the new Civics um, so we'll have to wait and see. For some official Honda news they did give us though they revealed the SUV E concept at the Beijing Auto Show that happened this past week and it looks really good to me. I love that they've made it two doors. Now clearly this is just a design study that's supposed to preview an electric production model um, that they're working on for China. Most likely the production version will be four doors. Um, it would take a lot of bravery to make a two-door SUV like this but um, I think it looks fantastic and I hope that those looks trickle down to their other models. I'd love to see a next gen Accord that looks like this and stuff. I think uh, that'd be a really good design direction and uh, so that's cool to see. Acura has also uh, teased the next gen MDX that's uh, going to be uh, fully revealed on October 14th. And they say it's going to be a prototype, but with Acura and Honda stuff, that generally means maybe the wheels and maybe the side mirrors might not be production ready. But even that sometimes is production ready. So basically it's gonna be, you know, 99% there. But anyway, it looks good, you know, from this teaser image. We already saw the leaks last year that basically gave this whole look away. Um, you know, it's basically just the RDX styling that it first worked its way onto the TLX. Now it's working its way onto the MDX. Um, so no surprises there. Mechanically, it shouldn't be any surprises either. You know, there's gonna be the Turbo 4 from the RDX and then uh, probably getting rid of the V6 and instead they'll have the Type S model, which will use the uh, twin turbo V6 you get in the Type S TLX. Um, those are kind of the predominant rumors right now, but we'll have to wait and see. We also saw some lightly camouflaged uh, mules running around uh, not too long ago as well. So no surprises here, but I think it's gonna be a great looking SUV and I'm excited to see what they do with the interior and stuff as well. 
But back to the Beijing Auto Show. Buick brought back the Electra name, which I think is pretty cool, for this electric concept car that shows off a new design language called Potential Energy that will influence future production Buicks, they say. And even if it's not a production model, Buick had a bunch of specs here on the car claiming uh, that it has two electric motors for all-wheel drive and that it supposedly has 583 horsepower. So there's no details on the battery pack, but they're claiming 410 miles of range and a 0 to 62 time of 4.3 seconds, which is an awful lot of info to give for a vehicle that is never going to see the light of day. Uh, but, you know, maybe this whole powertrain and the platform, you know, maybe is closer to production than we realize and it's just kind of disguised under this very futuristic looking concept body. But um, honestly, I'd be surprised that the Electra name doesn't end up on a production vehicle. It's just too perfect of a name for an electric car to be called the Electra. And it's, you know, a cool heritage name from Buick's past. I think that's a no brainer. I really hope we see some type of electric Electra uh, sometime, you know, in the future here in the States as well as in China. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. And some other uh, electric concept car news at Beijing. The uh, Polestar Precept concept that was very well received at the beginning of this year has just been greenlit for production uh, with a public announcement at the show that they were planning on you know, building it. And uh, like other Polestar models, it will be built in China, but hopefully it'll be sold here in America too, especially if it looks as good as that concept. That thing was a stunner, and I think that's why everyone had such a strong, positive reaction towards it that convinced uh, you know Polestar to build it. So um, uh, if they just make it just like that for the production version, uh, that is going to be an absolute knockout. So fingers crossed on that. Speaking of knockouts, though, Genesis officially uh, revealed spy pictures of a camouflaged G70 um, or GV70, I mean. And so um, you know, this is the SUV version. It's going to be on the G70 platform, um, but you know be their next SUV after the GV80. And you can see it's got the same split headlights and taillights as the other new Genesis models, especially you know, a little bit of a more rounded look you got from the brand new G70 I just covered a couple of weeks ago. And so, you know, a little less boxy than the GV80. Um, and this looks a little bit sportier, this one especially, with the very aggressive front bumper there and the rear hatch area. It's a little more sloped and has the aggressive bumpers with, you know, the big exhaust tips and stuff like that. Um, that might be suggesting it's going to have the twin turbo V6 possibly, whether it's the 3 or the 3.5 remains to be seen. Um, but either way, it's going to be a solid competitor to the X3 M40i and the GLC 43. So yeah, it should be arriving next year. And I'm excited to see it without camo and hear all the details on it. But uh, if it has, you know, that brand new Genesis interior, and then you have, you know, these really good looks, if they price it way under those Germans and they make it sound good, because that's one thing the Genesis models could use a little bit more exhaust note. If they add that in, uh, to compete with the X3, which does sound very good, and then it's M40i version, and the GLC 43, which sounds really cool. If it actually can compete with the sound too, they're going to have a really good little performance SUV here. It'd be very cool. But I just think it looks so, so good. Anyway, and some other exciting Hyundai news. I love, you know, Hyundai's always coming out with exciting stuff. I'm not going to go on a rant, but, um, you know, I just, you know, what other companies are announcing stuff like this? So the other thing they announced this week was the RM20e prototype that they revealed here. It's another RM mid-end engine prototype you know it's not production ready or anything but i mean the fact that they're even experimenting with stuff like this so um this one's using an electric powertrain of course uh, but it's from their rimac partnership um and so the numbers don't disappoint 810 horsepower 708 pound feet of torque and a zero to 60 time under three seconds for this thing uh, the max power is available for 20 second bursts like most electric cars. Amazingly, it's only a single 800 volt motor uh, so that it actually still retains rearable drive even with all that power. A lot of these others are having to do multiple motors and that forces them to be all wheel drive. Not the case here with this one. It runs a 60 kilowatt hour battery and the electric motor is right behind the front seats they say. So maybe you actually get to hear some electric motor whine which would be super cool. Um, Hyundai officially says the electrified RM platform will continue to evolve along with the growth of this Rimac partnership. It's going to be some sweet stuff between all the awesome gas stuff and we've ever seen the RM prototypes in the past running a gas engine, um, you know, a mid-engine sports car with a gas engine that supposedly Hyundai will be working on. It won't look like a Veloster. Um, I hope that does see the light of day and then if there's an electric version with 800 horsepower, Whew, that sounds like a Genesis flagship model, in my opinion. Um, that would be amazing, and uh, we'll have to see what happens. But uh, 
all kinds of cool stuff. And that's just on the Hyundai side. Kia's got their own thing they're working on. And, uh, you know, it's just all kinds of good stuff. Exciting stuff going on over there at uh, Hyundai and Kia. And Infinity this week has revealed a very beautiful concept. This is the QX60 monograph. And so they say, more than a design study or a concept, the monograph provides a tangible insight into how Infinity plans to transform a future model. The QX60 monograph previews some of the proportions and design elements that will adorn the brand's future three row SUV. So seems like it's gonna be pretty close to this though for the production version. And I hope that is the case because it looks really good in my eyes. They haven't really revealed the interior yet, um, but we shouldn't have too much longer to wait for this uh, considering there was already one spy testing by a viewer that sent some uh, spy shots in uh, from Arizona back a couple of weeks ago. And so it seems like it's, you know, fairly far along. Shouldn't be too much longer to wait for this. Um, but you know, all the other outlets are saying this should arrive obviously sometime next year in production form. So uh, we'll have to keep our eyes peeled for that. BMW this week officially revealed the convertible version of the 4 Series in the 430i and M440i versions. No M4 convertible yet. Other than the styling, the biggest change is that it now has gone back to a soft top instead of the old retractable hard top of the previous generations. They say the soft top is lighter by 40% and it takes up less space when it's down, so it's kind of a win-win. You get more cargo space there. It can be raised and lowered in 18 seconds. It speeds up to 31 miles per hour, or you can do it by the key fob. Mechanically, it's the same as the other four series with your choice of either the two liter turbo four cylinder or the turbo three liter straight six. But one uh, distinction here is that both engines have the option of either rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. So on the coupe version, the M440i is all wheel drive only. But if you get the convertible, you apparently have the choice of choosing rear wheel drive for that version if you'd like. Um, there's no more manual transmission offered. That was something that in the previous generation they did actually offer, but that of course is going away. Hopefully it'll be on the M4 version since the M3 and M4 offer it in the coupes, so we'll have to wait on that. But uh, the automatic does have a new sprint mode though, where if you hold down the downshift paddle, um, it puts everything into sport mode and goes to the lowest gear possible, which is kind of a cool feature. And so anyway, uh, prices are gonna be starting at $54,095, including destination, and that's for the base model. And then they go up to $66,995 for the top M440i xDrive before you add options onto it. So I mean, very easily can get one of these into the 70s probably with options and stuff and so anyway they're gonna be going on sale in March of 2021 so cool to see that Audi has revealed the 2022 Q5 Sportback and so it follows the same recipe as the other Sportback models with a more aggressively sloped hatch for a sportier look. The rear bumper and the hatch changes do actually make it 0.3 inches longer than a regular Q5 which does kind of give it a sleeker look for sure. The inside though is the same as a regular uh, new Q5 which is still a very nice and impressive place to be but it'll likely have a little less rear headroom since that's pretty typical for these types of vehicles. Um, Audi has confirmed that also like most of these coupe SUVs, cargo space is much less than a regular Q5, uh, basically giving it about the same amount of cubic feet as a subcompact crossover like the Q3. So if you thought, you know, I would love to have a vehicle that's as practical as a Q3, but I want to have a larger size vehicle that's harder to park, that's more expensive, um, then yet the Q5 Sportback is the ticket for you. Um, I know these things are popular and that's why they build them because if they weren't popular, um, they would quit building them. So clearly there's a large demand for these and so that's why they're churning them out like crazy. And so it is what it is. Um, but yeah, so um, mechanically it's the same as the regular Q5 except gets the sports suspension that's only optional on the regular Q5, so that's standard. Uh, it'll be offered in an SQ5 version as well. Although they say it won't get the plug-in hybrid version you can now get for the regular Q5. Um, so I'm not sure why, but uh, there's no pricing yet, but it'll be arriving next year. Volkswagen uh, still hasn't revealed the Taos subcompact crossover that uh, they're having here for America, and they've been slowly teasing it. I talked about that last week as well. But it revealed that it, uh, it's going to be having a new engine, though. That is one thing they revealed this week. It's going to be running a modified version of the 1.4 liter turbo four cylinder engine from the Jetta. It now is a 1.5 liter and does 11 more horsepower at 158 horsepower total. And torque is the same as the Jetta, though, uh, at 184 pound feet still, even with the larger displacement there. Um, it runs on a modified 
modified Miller cycle and uses various other improvements to help it with its fuel economy. Um, so it should be better than the uh, Jetta engine. Um, they also revealed it'll come standard with front wheel drive, but all wheel drive will be an option. Um, and that the engine will run through a seven speed dual clutch with that automatic or with the all wheel drive. And then it runs an eight speed automatic um, with the front wheel drive versions. Um, so probably the Eisen eight speed and then the seven speed dual clutch you get in the other uh, all wheel drive stuff. Um, so uh, makes sense there. They also revealed its length is going to be 174.2 inches, which makes it about the same size as the Kia Seltos. Kind of give you an idea of you know how it's going to be sized. Um, it's going to be revealing the whole vehicle later this year, and it'll be arriving at dealerships by the middle of 2021. So we'll have to keep our uh, eyes peeled for more of that. You know, I'm not sure how soon we'll be seeing that, but. Um, Another vehicle that uh, we got some specs on today is Ford has revealed these specs finally for the new 2021 F-150. So that was one thing that was kind of up in the air. We just saw the new exterior and interior and a lot of the details, but no engine specs. And so now we have all that. So first, that new Power Boost Hybrid F-150 will be the most torquey F-150 engine ever, even above the Raptor, um, with 570 pound-feet of torque. Um, horsepower is going to be 430 and then the 5 liter V8 also is slightly improved that does 5 more horsepower and 10 more pound feet of torque for totals of 400 horsepower and then 410 pound feet. Um, the 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 also does 25 more horsepower and 30 more pound feet for 400 horsepower total and 500 pound feet total of torque and um, the other engines don't get any changes so all the lower engines are the same. Ford also revealed that the tow capacity and the payload are both best in class now, at least for the time being. And they're constantly one-upping each other with the big three companies here. So um, they're saying it can tow up to 14,000 pounds now and has a payload of 3,325 pounds. Um, and so production has already started for these new F-150s. So we should start seeing them arriving within a few weeks at most dealers, I think. And so, yeah, cool to finally have those uh, specs and stuff now. And Ferrari this week has made a new one-off model for a very rich, very fortunate client of theirs. And uh, this one's called the Ferrari Homologata. Uh, probably butchered that, but anyway, it stands for homologation in Italian. And it's based on an 812 Superfast. And although it looks very similar to one, it actually only shares the headlights and windshield with the 812. The rest is custom made and unique to this car. And so there's like handmade aluminum panels for the body and stuff. Um, and they say it took them two years to make the car from the initial sketch to actual production. Um, and it's supposed to channel stuff like the 250 GTO and other past Ferraris. That's kind of why you see those vents in the um, nose and stuff like that. Uh, and it looks really good to me, but as far as insanely expensive one-offs goes, I think that Aston Martin Victor that I featured a couple of weeks ago, that still takes the cake in my book with its manual naturally aspirated V12 and stuff and those just gorgeous looks of that thing. This looks good too. But man, that Aston Martin was a uh, was a car. Man, that thing was awesome. Anyway, the last news story this week. Uh, for those that miss hot hatches, I figured I'd cover um, this uh, story here. So you know, Ford used to sell the Fiesta ST and the Focus ST, and many of you miss those. And so I wanted to feature the Ford Puma ST that Ford is selling to Europe and I think other parts of the world, but sadly not to us. Uh, of course, we don't get the Puma here. It runs a similar 1.5 liter three cylinder um, that the new Fiesta ST runs over in Europe. But in this one, it does a little more power. So it's 200 horsepower and 236 pound feet of torque, along with a 6.7 seconds zero to 60 time and all the other ST improvements that they usually get to make it sportier with the suspension and the seats on the inside and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be on sale in Europe before the end of the year, and I wish that Ford could find a way to justify it here in the States, because it is somewhat, somehow considered a subcompact crossover. I don't think that looks like an SUV whatsoever. That is like a hatchback that has maybe a half inch extra ground clearance over a Fiesta. Um, they're really blurring the lines here, but uh, I think that could still technically skirt under the uh, regulation of you know, Ford not doing cars anymore and still be something they could offer here for those who miss the original STs, not the you know Explorer ST and the Edge ST which are massive and I don't think really live up to the ST name. Um, but uh, yeah, so 
They're at least in Europe. They're still making awesome stuff there for performance uh, for the Hot Hatch fans, and so uh, it's cool for all of those of you in Europe that are lucky. But um, as Autoblog pointed out, a lot of you in Europe, I'm sure, wish you could get the Bronco, and the Bronco is not coming over there. So it's kind of a give and take, I suppose. Uh, but yes, yeah, so that's it for all the news this week, guys. Let me know your thoughts on all this stuff in the comments below. I hope you guys continue to stay safe and healthy. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.